Right then, welcome back everyone. Now today, I want to talk about the new Puss in Boots film. When I saw that DreamWorks were bringing out a new Puss in Boots film, I was skeptical, I won't lie. All the other standalone projects surrounding this character had been pretty mediocre, and in the Shrek films he was never one of my favourites. But clearly, DreamWorks just needed 11 years to cook, because let me tell you, this is one of the best animated films I've seen in a long, long time. It's poignant, heartwarming, genuinely funny, has an unbelievably stacked cast, looks sensational, and so many more things, if I tried to list them all in this intro, it would never end. And so in that vein, I'm not going to waste any more time, and I'm just going to get straight into it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. This project has been in the works for over 10 years, and it has not had an easy journey. In 2012, Guillermo del Toro announced the intention of a sequel, and to take Puss in Boots to a quote, very exotic locale. Antonio Banderas confirmed work on the sequel in April of 2014, with the movie being titled Puss in Boots 2, Nine Lives in 40 Thieves. However, shortly after this, it was reported that the script was being restructured, and no news was heard about the film at all until 2018, four years later, when Chris Melodandri was brought on board as executive producer. A year later after this, the title Puss in Boots for the Last Wish was trademarked, and a year after that, the director Joel Crawford was appointed. And then finally, the cast for the film was announced in March of 2022, and here we are today, February 2023, when the film was finally released. Anyways, let's talk about the film. The plot of the film is simple, but done brilliantly. After Puss discovers he is down to the last of his nine lives, he loses his passion for adventure. To make matters worse, the unstoppable bounty hunter known as the Big Bad Wolf is after him. And so, to restore his nine lives and avoid his fate, he sets out on a quest to find the mythical Last Wish, a fallen star that will grant him anything he desires. Now I do have to say, the first 10 minutes or so weren't great. They were very cheesy and I was sort of sitting there thinking, oh god, this is going to be shit. However, once the main story begins and we're introduced to all the other characters, it's like an entirely different film. And I think the reason for this change is exactly that. It's these secondary characters that are really what take this film to the next level. So I want to start by talking about them. As you'd expect, there's multiple parties all searching for this last wish. Alongside Puss, there's Kitty Softpaws. Can't believe I have to say that out loud. Goldilocks and the Three Bears, Jack Horner and his Baker's Dozen, and of course the Big Bad Wolf as I mentioned before. Each one of them has their own clear set of motives and distinct personalities. It's a miracle all the separate character arcs are completed by the end of the film, let alone with such emotional and satisfying payoffs. I particularly enjoyed the portrayal of Jack Horner in this film, as this hulking, evil man-child bent on controlling all magic in the world. His room of magical relics from various fairy tales and stories was a really nice touch, and every bit of dialogue with him and the conscience cricket had me chuckling. That's not even to mention the quality of the voice acting. The big names, and there's a lot of them, like Antonio Banderas, Selma Hayek, Florence Pugh, Olivia Coleman, and Ray Winston, all delivered, as expected, excellent performances. But even the lesser well-known actors, like John Mulaney, who's Andrew from Big Mouth, Samson Keo, and Harvey Guillen, were all exceptional. The standout character, though, has to be the Big Bad Wolf. I genuinely don't think I can remember a cooler but also scarier animated villain than him. As soon as you hear that creepy whistle and the scraping of his sickles along the floor, you are on edge. I think as well, if I was a small child, he probably would have given me nightmares. Something that surprised me about the film was how good the fight choreography was. I genuinely can't believe I was sat there enjoying Puss in Boots battling Goldilocks and the Big Bad Wolf more than some of the recent MCU and DC films, but I was, and it wasn't even close. From the initial fight with the giant of Del Mar to the ridiculously cool final fight with the wolf, they were all great. The film also looked stunning. The scenery once they entered the dark forest was incredible. I especially liked when a different character held the map and the entire landscape completely changed in front of their eyes. The art style of the characters is almost as if they're hand drawn, similar to the style of Into the Spider-Verse, but each one had such bright, vibrant eyes. As I mentioned, I love the look of Jack Horner with his enormous body but tiny little pinhead and his permanently stained thumb. But again, there was just no topping the wolf. He just looked way too clean with the jewel-wheeled sickles and his piercing red eyes. The film also does a really great job at conveying its underlying message in a way that isn't patronising but can also be appreciated by younger viewers. And finally, the Shrek films cameos from Pinocchio and the Gingerbread Man just topped it all off. I can only hope that that ending is hinting towards new Shrek films and that they're as good as this one. This really may be DreamWorks' best ever film. The only one I can think of that could rival it is Megamind, but if anyone watching has a different opinion, please let me know in the comments down below. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why not check out this other video I made, where I talk about the new film, The Banshees of Inisherin.